days. Save 25% during our fall special order sale at the Choice Eating near you. Don't miss the 200th birthday of the Constitution. Because once it's over, it's history. Michael Keaton, Terry Garr, and Mr. Mom, 8 p.m. tonight. Good morning, everyone. In the headlines, celebrations, festivities, and some serious patriotism are the order of the day as all Americans celebrate the 200th anniversary of the U.S. Constitution. And the outlook on Constitution Day calls for life, liberty, and uh, the pursuit of sunshine. Good morning, everyone. I'm Charles Gibson from Philadelphia. Kathleen Sullivan, unfortunately, still ill today. September 17th, 1987, the 200th anniversary of the U.S. Constitution. And we are right above Independence Hall. It all started here 200 years ago. This, of course, was the first capital of the United States. And there are many firsts in the city of Philadelphia. The first American library, first bank, first mint, first zoo, first public hospital here. And the first American university, also the first American stock exchange, labor union, and daily newspaper. There were many inventions here, of course, not just Ben Franklin. He invented the book of matches, or somebody did here in Philadelphia. Also, of course, not coincidentally, the first insurance company, fire insurance company, was here. We're going to go to Boston today. Also, leaving here and going to Boston to the uh, USS Constitution in Boston Harbor. It is there there will be a celebration today in which 100 new Americans will become citizens. The guns booming in the Boston Harbor. You'll also meet in this half hour artist Peter Max, actor Wayne Rogers, lots of stuff going on here in Philadelphia and in Boston. Right now in Washington, Jed DeVal with the news. Jed? Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. Supreme Court nominee Robert Bork is expected to complete his testimony today before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senators are hearing his views on such critical constitutional issues as the right of privacy and the civil rights of women, blacks, and other minorities. The chairman of that Senate panel is himself in the spotlight today. Senator Joseph Biden is answering charges that he has used other men's words in his presidential campaign speeches without acknowledging that they are not his. Further, it is said that this is not the first time that Biden has faced such charges. Reports are that Biden was accused of plagiarism while a student at Syracuse University Law School. According to the New York Times, a review board found Biden guilty but allowed him to stay in school after he promised never to do it again. The charge of plagiarism in Biden's campaign speeches first surfaced last week when critics charged that one of those speeches closely resembled one given earlier by British Labour Party leader Neil Kinnock. Where am I? The first Kinnock in a thousand generations to be able to get the university. And I started thinking as I was coming over here, why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university? The two have family histories that are remarkably similar. Those people who could wait, work, eight hours underground, and then come up and play football. My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in Northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football for four hours. Biden aides claim the candidate credited Kinnick in every speech but one. However, Biden paraphrased without attribution the late Robert Kennedy and Hubert Humphrey. <clears throat> Political director Hal Bruno is with us this morning. Hal, so what? Suppose it's not a violation of the law. Suppose I started ending the newscast with that's the way it is. I wouldn't be arrested. No, but you'd be criticized and, yeah, and would, the critics would make fun of you. It would be tacky. Yeah, and I think what happens, we're at the stage of the campaign where candidates are trying to establish their credibility and to be believable to people and to be trusted. And they find new ways of falling downstairs. Uh, in this case, uh, Senator, the accusations of plagiarism raise questions about whether or not the senator is for real or is he in just another phony? Uh, can he be trusted? Uh, why not give credit? And also there, there, there's a question of if you're talking to Democratic audiences, why not raise the name of Hubert Humphrey and Robert Kennedy and John F. Kennedy? That always, that's good for an applause line. Well, is, is this happening just now? He's been a senator for some time, many, many years. I mean, oh, has he yeah, been but he's been, a, he's been a presidential candidate only recently. And out there on the campaign stump, 
uh, Senator Biden has become known as the Democrats' best speechmaker. He's the one that everybody wants at their Jackson Jefferson Day dinners. And uh, he, his stock and trade has been his ability to communicate and give a good speech. And if uh, there are charges of plagiarism concerning what he says, that has a tremendous impact on the credibility well, I, I question. I suppose his critics could say, no wonder he's such a good speechmaker. Look whose speeches he's giving. I mean, if that's the case. Yeah, but you, you know, cr until a candidate is accepted as credible, people are not really that willing to listen to him. And if people have questions about the, the person's integrity, about their credibility, they're not going to be listening yeah. to them. Thanks, you, Hal. Thanks a lot. Hal Bruno, our political director. Pope John Paul today visits AIDS victims in Northern California. The Pope will also meet with gay Catholics who reject the Vatican's position that their sexual preference is an intrinsic moral evil. Yesterday, the Pope made it clear that such dissent is incompatible with being a good Catholic. Gary Shepard has more. Inside Dodger Stadium last night, Pope John Paul II celebrated Mass for 60,000. Outside, a small group of non-Catholic demonstrators gathered in opposition to the papal visit. Earlier, as the pontiff arrived for the largest meeting of American Catholic bishops ever held in this country, Catholic women displayed signs protesting his opposition to birth control, abortion, and women in the priesthood. Inside the meeting, there was discussion of those and other critical issues confronting the Catholic Church in America. One of those who took part said later, John Paul is not angry at American Catholics, but has ordered his bishops to be more aggressive in teaching church beliefs. I don't think the Pope is saying everybody who practices birth control should leave the church, stop going to communion, leave the church and get out of our way. I think the church is a much more pastoral community than that. Just the same, American Catholics cannot pick and choose which doctrine they wish to embrace, said the Pope, and remain in good standing. Pope John Paul heads up the California coast this morning, but he may not be leaving controversy behind. More demonstrations are expected in San Francisco by gay Catholics opposed to the church's attitude toward them. Gary Shepard, ABC News, Los Angeles. In Moscow and Washington, optimism now about the chances for a treaty on medium and short-range missiles. Soviet leader Gorbachev said in an article published this morning that a pact could come this year and that another agreement on strategic arms could follow as early as next year. Foreign Secretary Shevardnadze and Secretary of State Schultz wrap up their talks in Washington today. Optimism in Detroit as well. Ford Motor and the UAW both say negotiators are very near a new contract there. A look now at today's news calendar. The House is expected to pass a bill that would offer $20,000 to each Japanese-American now living who was sent to an internment camp during World War II. A federal task force today releases a study on acid rain. Its conclusion, only a small fraction of American lakes have been damaged by acid rain, and things are not likely to get worse. A B-1B bomber will leave Palmdale, California today and will fly fast with a heavy payload in an attempt to break 18 flight records now held by the Soviets. Finally, a South African woman has placed an ad that speaks for itself in her local newspaper. In it, she thanks her husband's doctor for giving her husband a vasectomy. The ad is signed by loving wife Bertha and children Phyllis, Fred, Victor, Robin, Joan, Michael, Bronwyn, Linda, Reginald, Lucy, Betty, Peter, Edward, Sally, and Priscilla. That's 15 kids, and that's the news, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jed. It is now uh, eight minutes after the hour, and time for the weather with Spencer Christian, who is down on Independence Mall, right across from Independence Hall. That is right, Charlie, and what I'm going to do before I talk about weather is introduce you to some of the foods that Philadelphia is famous for. First of all, the famous Philadelphia cheese steak. They call it that because it's a steak with, with cheese. <laughs> Clever name. Uh, we also have here the famous Philadelphia hoagie. Now, in some towns, this would be called a hero. The most heroic thing the hoagie does is it goes down without upsetting your stomach. Now, another food that Philly is famous for is the soft pretzel with mustard. There it is right there. And, and... Philadelphia cream cheese. It's only made in Philadelphia. The people who make this stuff, they move out of Philadelphia, they forget how to make it. Philadelphia cream cheese. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at today's weather. Starting with the satellite view, it's going to be a cloudy, rainy, messy day over much of the eastern part of the country. Showers and thunderstorms moving out of the Mississippi Valley and the Great Lakes into the north and the mid-Atlantic. Uh, over the central plains, they're clearing out nicely. Some clouds you may recognize there over, over Oregon, not Oregon, but uh, Colorado and Wyoming, representing rainstorms and snow 
in the higher elevations. Here is the area of our nastiest weather today. Powerful thunderstorms this morning moving through portions of Kentucky, Tennessee, southern uh, Indiana and southwestern Ohio. These storms will weaken as the morning grows older, but they will redevelop as stronger storms farther to the east later in the afternoon. That's a quick look at the national weather picture. Here's what's happening in your hometown area. And we have mostly cloudy skies and 73 degrees at the moment. Variable cloudiness with a shower is on tap for this morning. Then this afternoon, clouds, then some sunshine, warm and humid. Chance of a thunderstorm and a high of 82 degrees. And now we're going to go from weather and food to art. And joining us is one of the uh, great artists of our generation, Hi, Peter Max. Good to right. have you with us, Peter. Thank you. I understand you're going to be doing something rather unusual in this uh, bicentennial con constitution it's, celebration. It's of, sort of keeping in the tradition of what I've been doing since 1976, since I've been painting the Statue of Liberty every year, mm -hmm. which led to the renovation of the Statue of Liberty. And this year at Penn's Landing, I'm going to paint the 10 stanzas of America the Beautiful, Purple Mountain Majesty and Amber Waves of Grain. And, and it's about 40 foot long. Wow. It's being set up. We, there was so much great security over here. They couldn't get the truck through. They were going to bring three paintings in. Right. So maybe we're later on. We're seeing a sketch of it right now, actually. Yeah. yeah. This, that's the one. Yeah. This is a sketch I did a couple days ago. And these are actually now about five foot tall, four right. foot wide a piece, 10 pieces, which gives you nice... Um, Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. During the, the decade of the 60s, you were uh, strongly identified with that period in our, in our history and what yeah. was going on socially. And then all of a sudden, about 15 years ago, you sort of dropped out of, out of the limelight. What, what yeah. happened? Well, I was extremely successful, and the success uh, got to me in a way where I, it was taking me away from my art, from my painting. And I'm really uh, a, a painter. It's all I do is draw and paint. And so in 1970, I gave it all up. And I painted and painted day and night for about 14 hours a day for 15 years. And about last year, I decided to come back out and do it and come back out on behalf of the ecology and the planet like I always used to. Right, right. Listen, get back to the Purple Mountain Majesty and the Amber Waves of nice. Grain, and we'll check in with you later to see how you're doing on those murals, Great. okay? Thank right. you. Thanks, Peter. And, Charlie, I'll have more weather in the next half hour. Thank you very much, Spencer. It's 12 minutes after the hour. There are celebrations elsewhere today, and we're going to go to Boston Harbor in Boston, Massachusetts. The USS Constitution there. In a short while, 100 foreign-born American residents will be sworn in as citizens in Boston. Among them, Olga Ginsburg, who was born in Russia, and Fidel Camaro, who is from Venezuela. Good morning to the two of you. Good morning. Good morning. Olga, I know you've been here seven years. You came with your husband and daughter from Russia. Why'd you leave there? Why'd you come here? Uh, well, uh, Charles, it's hard to answer in a few words. Um, uh, I would summarize it as um, uh, we would uh, like to have a better life for our kids, and we also were seeking uh, um, more personal freedom. And Fidel, you came here from Venezuela. I know you expected to go back there. Yes. Why did you stay here? Well, I happened to uh, meet my wife, and uh, after she decided uh, to say yes to my marriage proposal, she also said that she was not going to leave the States. And so I said, well, will stay. And uh, as it turned out, it was the best thing for me. And was there something that triggered the thought in your mind at any point that you would actually stay? I'm sorry? Was there something that really triggered the thought in your mind that you would actually stay? I mean, was there a moment when you came to realize that I'm no longer going to be a Venezuelan, I'm going to be an American? Uh, yes, but it wasn't like an inst instant uh, moment. Uh, it, it happened through uh, probably in the course of two and a half years that uh, uh, little by little I started to realize that I felt more and more that I belong here and you, now I'm becoming a, an American citizen. You've been here nine years. Yes. What difference will citizenship make? Um, I, well, I will give me uh, the, the right to vote for one and uh, that's probably what I'm looking for, to participate, to, to give back what I have gotten from the uh, people of the United States and the United States itself to participate, to make my voice uh, heard. Uh, it's my right, but also a responsibility. Olga, when you were in the Soviet Union, you had the right to vote, didn't you? You voted. Uh, yes, I did. Um, the only difference, I think, is uh, that here I feel like I um, really can make a difference. Uh, uh, and there, um, it was sort of a uh, um, a duty which, um, you know, I uh, have to perform <laughs> rather than uh, feeling that I, I, I make a difference. You two will become citizens today. Olga, the first thing you're going to do as a U.S. citizen. 
feels well. <laughs> I probably the first thing I probably going to hug my husband and my my daughter. <laughs> And how about, uh, how about you, Fidel? First thing, as an American citizen, I guess is give thanks. And uh, go home and have apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more American than that. That's right. right. <laughs> Fidel Camaro, Olga Ginsburg, my congratulations to the two of you. This is a big day for you, and you're nice to share part of it with us. Thank you for being Thank with you. us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. It's 15 minutes after the hour, and we'll be back in a moment. You will meet some descendants of those who signed the U.S. Constitution 200 years ago today. You know what this is, don't you? It's a newspaper. It's so big, it can only be the Sunday Philadelphia Inquirer. And now we deliver it better than we ever have before. We really want to show you how much our service has improved. So, get ready. A fantastic offer is about to fall right into your hands. Now when you order eight weeks of the Sunday Inquirer, you get four of those weeks for free. That's eight weeks of the Sunday Inquirer with a money-back guarantee. You get a better newspaper and better delivery. And hey, you get four weeks free! Call today. We promise to deliver them one Sunday at a time. You know, you've heard me talk about New Jersey as a great vacation spot. A place where you can run free on a long, sandy beach. A place where you can do almost anything. Anything except evade your taxes. So if you haven't paid your taxes, do it now. Because we have a lot of nice places to visit. But this is not one of them. New Jersey Tax Amnesty. We know who you are. Now it's the Great Shake Clearance at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Get great savings on Mercury Cougar when you buy a preferred equipment package along with 1.9 APR financing. Save on Mercury Sable with a preferred equipment package and 1.9% financing. The savings keep coming on Topaz, Lynx, and Tracer 2 with 1.9% financing. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer now. This afternoon, executives from Wampler Longacre are conducting a top-secret taste test. For three generations, the Wampler and Longacre families have relied on a specially trained taster to test their turkey and chicken products. Within moments, the fate of Wampler Longacre's smoke-sliced turkey breast will be in his hands and in his mouth. Because before our smoked turkey is good enough for your family, it's got to be good enough for ours. Wampler Longacre. Tender turkey and chicken lunch meats. It is now 17 minutes after the hour, and with us at this point are three descendants of those who signed the Constitution 200 years ago today, and I'm going to have to read this because it gets real complicated. Jacqueline Rucker is the great-granddaughter of the great-great-grand-nephew of Abraham Baldwin of Georgia, and if you can follow that, you're a better man than I am going to get in. John Ingersoll is the great-great-great-grandson, right, of Jared Ingersoll of Pennsylvania, and Governor Michael Castle of Delaware is the great-great-great-great-grandson of Benjamin Franklin, also of Pennsylvania. And I should mention uh, that Jacqueline and John are dressed this way not because they are the original signers, but because they're going to be participating in the festivities today, and it's nice to have uh, all three of you here. Give me the background of your of your uh, relative, Abraham Baldwin. What was he like? What did he do here? Well, he was really a very interesting person. He was actually born in Connecticut, went to Yale, graduated via, taught via, and during the Revolutionary War, he served as an army chaplain. After the war, he came south to Georgia with the rest of the Baldwins and became very active in politics. He was our representative for 10 years, our senator for eight years, and he founded the University of Georgia. But which... when he was here, how much of a part did he play here? What, you mean, oh, when he was here. important, when he was signing the, working on the Constitution, he really played a pivotal role because at that time there was a big controversy between the large states and the small states. The small states wanted equal representation in the Senate. The large states said, no, we want it based on population. Well, it came to a vote, and to everybody was surprised when Abraham Baldwin voted with the smaller states, and it tied up the vote. 
And if you had not done that, the small mistakes might have gotten mad and gone home, and we might not have had a constitution. <laughs> <laughs> and how about Jared Ingersoll? He was a quiet type, I guess. Yeah, he was. He didn't say too much during the convention. Uh, he attended all the sessions. He was a lawyer in Philadelphia, one of the most prominent. And um, he had a lot to do with the ratification process. He was a member of the committee with Benjamin Franklin. Uh, they drafted a letter after the Constitution was signed, and they sent it up to New York uh, trying to convince them to ratify the Constitution. But of course, Delaware was the first state that did that. Indeed they were, although your descendant, we all know, was from Pennsylvania. Now, do you, when you're campaigning, do you trade much on this connection with Ben Franklin? Carly, I can say that until about a week ago, I don't think more than 10 people in Delaware knew this. It's not something that I talk about. I don't think it's at all relevant to campaigning. It's an interesting historical fact. And I enjoy it, but I don't think it has anything to do with running Delaware today. You don't haul out Ben at any no, point. No, we don't, we don't uh, haul out Ben and say, this is what Ben would have done or anything <laughs> of that nature. Well, I am interested, though. I mean, obviously, all three of you must dabble a little bit in the history of your, of your relatives. And I know Ben Franklin was quoted as saying he'd like to come back at some point and see how things that they've accomplished over here had worked out. What do you think he'd think of all this? I'd love to have Ben Franklin back, for starters. He'd be a fascinating person to talk to. But I think of all the people who are around, in uh, 1787, I, Ben Franklin would probably be the least surprised by what he would see. I don't think airplanes or cars or any of the modern technology would necessarily surprise him because he was so advanced himself in, in terms of scientific study. But I think what he would be most pleased about is the fact that we run our country under the same constitution that they put together 200 years ago. I'm not sure if he would totally have believed that. And we've made some changes and I think good progress in terms of freedom for, for people since then. But basically, it's, it's how little we have changed all these years in terms of how America's run that, that Ben would be proudest of, I think. If you did come back, it should be a terrific endorsement to have when you were running. It would I be would a great say. endorsement to have, but I don't think we can arrange it. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Either. How about Jared Ingersoll? What happened to him? What, uh, what happened to him afterward? You said he was involved in the he ratification. He was the Attorney vote. General of Pennsylvania. He was a district court judge presiding in Philadelphia. He was the vice presidential candidate in 1812. He lost, unfortunately. And um, he died in 1822. How about Baldwin? What do you think I asked about what Ben Franklin might have thought when he came back? What do you think Mr. Baldwin might have the thought about all this when he, if he, if he had a chance to come back and take a look at it? I really don't know, but he was a very quiet, quiet person. He was basically an educator. He founded the University of Georgia, which is... We've got a helicopter going right, right overhead here. I don't know if it's a Secret Service helicopter or some television station, but uh, you go ahead and right. hopefully people will be able to hear oh, you. Hear. Uh, he founded the university, which is the oldest land-grant college in the United States. He founded it in 1785. And of course, the students didn't arrive till 10 dozen years later, I guess around 1800. But, I, but I, what do you think he would have thought of all this going on around here? Well, being a ball one, I don't think he would have been surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have all of you here. Uh, Jacqueline Rucker, I won't go through all the greats again, but it's nice to know all three of you are so great. I mean, you have so many greats. And, uh, you know, you have Jacqueline Rucker, descended from Abraham Baldwin. John Ingersoll, descended from Jared. And Governor Mike Castle of Delaware. Somebody got, got you across river there. And the first state to ratify the Constitution. Absolutely. Let's remember that, Charles. We descended from Ben Franklin. We you were the fourth. fourth, indeed you were. Thanks, all three of you, for being here. It's now 23 after. We'll be back. Something special is arriving. A remarkable car. Available at a remarkable price. Because your local dealer has special factory incentives to make exceptional deals. The car is the German-engineered Audi 4000. And it's priced to bring first-class travel down to earth. Welcome to Sitmar class. The difference in a Sitmar cruise... You know, you must be an officer to steal the ship. <laughs> ...is a rare combination of professionalism and warmth... Is it all right? Perfecto. ...that we call Sitmar class. It's crew members who make you feel special. And accord with the guitar. Guitar! Ah! And it's what makes Sitmar the choice of experienced cruisers. Uh, you and the cash. Uh, Sitmar class. Cruise the Panama Canal Sitmar class. Act now for early booking discounts.
While the delegates to the Constitutional Convention hammered out our national charter, superb craftsmen carved and hammered the finest in furniture and silver. The federal period was alive with creativity in the arts, and the Philadelphia Museum of Art is presenting 250 superb objects, paintings, and costumes of the period through Sunday, September 20th. Come see the visual riches of the new nation in the exhibition Federal Philadelphia, 1785 through 1825 at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, made possible by a generous grant from the... Open Thursday. Mmm, it's delicious. It's amazing. Soldier's pistols. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked. You've seen these commercials, shot secretly in fine restaurants, but maybe you think, no one in my house would fall for that Folger's switch. Well, now you can find out. Write to Folger's Switch at this address, and we'll send you a high-value coupon for Folger's Crystals and a step-by-step -step brochure to do the secret switch at home. Folger's Crystals. Find out if someone in your home will say, Well, this tastes just like fresh brew to me. I can't believe it. Action News is brought to you by Volvo, a car you can believe in. Good morning, I'm Elliot Rodriguez. It's 73 degrees and cloudy on City Line Avenue. The AccuWeather forecast is coming up. In the news this morning, this is Constitution Day in Philadelphia. 200 years ago today, our forefathers signed the document that set up the government under which this country is run. Thousands of tourists are already in Philadelphia for the big celebration that begins at 9 o'clock this morning with a big parade. And some of the people taking part in that parade spent yesterday getting in some last-minute rehearsal time. The parade begins at 9 o'clock this morning, and you can head down to Center City or, better yet, watch it live here on Channel 6. Dave Roberts and Lisa thomas Lorry will follow all the action in Center City. At Penn's Landing, the Great American Picnic begins at noon. President Reagan will be in town to give a speech, and you won't want to miss the big moment at 4 o'clock. Former Supreme Court Chief Justice Warren Burger will ring a replica of the Liberty Bell, setting off similar celebrations across the nation. At night, a gala dinner and a big fireworks show, as well as the lighting of the Ben Franklin Bridge. President Reagan will be in Philadelphia today to talk about the Constitution and what it means to the nation. But he kicked off the party yesterday from the nation's capital. The president led Congress, the Supreme Court, and thousands of school children around the country in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Across the nation, construction workers, stockbrokers, and even ordinary people walking down the street joined in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. <laughs> and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and justice for all. Here in Philadelphia, the countdown to today's Big Bash began yesterday. The Pennsylvania Ballet performed an all-American dance to the music of Gershwin at the Academy of Music. And some good news for the We the People Pavilion. It's here to stay. It won't be torn down as first predicted. Also yesterday, the Constitution was signed all over again. 600 descendants of the men who drew up the document came to Philadelphia to participate in the birthday celebration. 39 of them, one descendant of each signer, will take part in the historic festivities today. And Channel 6 will carry all of today's Constitution Day events live beginning at 9 o'clock this morning with the big parade, and then we'll have complete wrap-ups during Action News at 5, 6, and 11. In an effort to attract women, car makers have tried a lot of gimmicks. Gentlemen, I give you the pink car. Everything from pink cars to retraining salesmen. Let's begin. Hi, a little lady. Hi again. Hello, man. That's better. At Volvo, we attract women to our showrooms the same way we attract men, with the car that's inside. Brought to you by Volvo, a car you can believe in. In sports, the Phillies pulled one off last night. They scored seven runs in the seventh inning and went on to beat the Chicago Cubs 8-5. to five. The team sent 11 men to the plate and took advantage of three walks in a row. Steve Bedrosian got the last out for his 37th win of the season. Checking the all-important AccuWeather forecast, variable cloudiness with a shower this morning, 73 degrees right now. This afternoon, it'll be cloudy with some sunshine, warm and humid, and there's a chance of a thunderstorm, the high 82 degrees. Stay tuned to Channel 6 for complete coverage of today's constitutional celebration. I'm Elliot. Rodriguez. I'm Grandpa Stroman with the tastiest part of the day. Mmm, your Stroman tastes great. And keeps you going. 
for breakfast, lunch, or dinner any time. Mein Stroman bread is the tastiest part of the day, and I never use artificial preservatives. My kids love it, and I know it's nutritious. That's because I make sure the goodness is baked in. You're so good, Grandpa. <laughs> That's what they all say about mein Stroman bread. Macy's has savings designed with you in mind. A $2,000 Chesterfield leather sofa, now $999. And made Chinese 100% wool rugs, $399. 50% off a huge assortment of bedding. And Magnavox's 20-inch TV with remote, only $299. Thursday through Saturday at all Macy's in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. We're Macy's and we're a part of your Come see the visual riches of the new nation in the major exhibition Federal Philadelphia 1785 through 1825 at the Philadelphia Museum of Art July 5th through September 20th. The controversy over Robert Bork, 6.30 Sunday night. Mm -hmm.